Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a fragrance by the House of Cartier and the one we have today is Busy Boulet. So Busy Boulet means stolen kiss. This is what the bottle looks like. Very beautiful presentation itself. It's kind of like a flask itself. This does close so you can travel with it. The nice thing about Cartier and their fragrances is that most of them have a built-in mechanism that kind of protects the sprayer itself. So we saw that in Karat, we saw it in Lanvol, we do see that also in Eau de Cartier and multiple other different fragrances. This is one of their mainstream fragrances. It is supposed to represent a stolen kiss. This fragrance was launched in 2011. They have done reformulation. They have done multiple different flankers of this fragrance. Quite a few of them have actually disappeared. We did get a Parfum Essence. We did get a couple of different ones, and this is the one that is still around. There might be some other ones, but this is the main one in the line itself. The perfumer for this fragrance is Mathilde Laurent, which is the in-house perfumer for the House of Cartier. She does a lot of the fragrances for this house itself. This fragrance is very unique because I go on multiple different sites to locate the notes because Cartier on their website does not give you the note breakdown for this fragrance. You can definitely tell it is a green, soft, powdery, very aromatic type of fragrance itself. But the notes that we do get on this one, the top notes would be Lily Pistol, and then you get Lily as the heart note. And then on the base, we get Lily Leaf. So multiple different parts of a Lily plant. This is a Calla Lily, not a Lily, but a Lily plant. And yes, so it does have that planty type of vibe to it. So it does have that green leaf sharpness, you know, that greenness in it. But it's not a green fragrance. It does have that floralness to it, but it's not a floral fragrance. It does have some white musk in here as well, because you can definitely tell it is. You can tell that it has the characteristics of white musk, but it's not a musky fragrance. It's kind of like a nice hybrid of everything. Just so you do know, this is marketed to women. However, this fragrance, like a lot of the Cartier fragrances, can lean in the middle. So you do get fragrances like Lanvol, which are supposed to be men fragrance, and they're mostly worn by women. And then you have fragrances like the Eau de Cartier, which is supposed to be considered and marketed towards women, and they tend to be worn by everyone. So Cartier is one of those houses that kind of breaks the rule as to what is for what. You know, you can wear whatever you want, essentially, because... They're so universally able to be worn by everyone. And that's the nice thing about a fragrance is there's no preconcept notion of what gender is in fragrance. Like I said, going into the packaging, you do see Cartier here. You do see the name of the fragrance on the top here. Like I said, this lid does close. It does open. It is a very nice bottle. It is a solid glass. It is a heavy duty type of glass itself. So you can actually, you know, drop it and not break it and shatter it. I wouldn't go drop it on hardwood floors, but let's say you drop it on carpet, it will survive the drop for sure. Now, when spraying this fragrance, you do get a very reminiscent Cartier vibe to it. This is kind of like a Chanel vibe because Chanel kind of has an aldehydic type of vibe to it as a fragrance house. This one itself is, it's powdery. It's not like Prada's powdery because Prada is a very iris powdery. This is kind of a very soft, delicate touch of powderiness if that makes any sense it is clean it is vibrant it is fresh but it's powdery it does have a clean linen type of vibe to it itself the fragrance itself like i said is very much done well so she did a really great job with this fragrance um it does have the green elements in here as well it has some aquaticness to it as well so it's kind of like going into a garden to smell flowers and they have a nice pond of some sort it is a nice dewy wet day and you're somewhere by a mountain somewhere if that makes sense. <laughs> and that's really what this fragrance gives you vibes of it's it's very much in line with the house because obviously Cartier being a, a fragrance house it does have that you know sparkle to all their fragrances that they always put in so like bold green makes fragrances that are the la gems which are supposed to be significant of gemstones Cartier kind of does this in their fragrances without calling it the name of a diamond or a name of a gemstone because they do add that nice, like I said, sparkle and flair to it. You do get some vibrancy in this fragrance as well. It's really nice. It's very wearable. I would say that this is more of a younger type of scent. So if you like Le Panther by Cartier or you like any of the old 
classic Cartier fragrances. You might not like Basivoli, uh, which is Stolen Kiss, because it is a little too light. Longevity on this is actually not terrible. It is an eau de parfum, so you do have the higher concentration of oils here, higher concentration of oils. <laughs> But this fragrance itself is one of those fragrances that does last anywhere from six to seven hours. I've noticed if you grab a cream with this one that has no scent and then you layer this on top, you might get eight to nine hours out of this one, although it might become more of a skin scent. That trick does not work on every fragrance, so just keep that in mind. I do try to see which fragrances do work with that trick, and not all of them do. Some of them actually get eaten up by the cream itself, so... This one itself is very nice. It is a really great fragrance. I would say it's really perfect for the summertime because it does have that nice light quality to it. It's also very refreshing without being an aquatic fragrance itself. It has a floral touches without being overly floral as well. And it does have the green elements without being, you know, number 19 or a very grandma-ish fragrance because green fragrances can kind of fall in that category if they're not done right. So I would certainly say to check this fragrance out. Boisy Bolle is a really nice fragrance and I certainly do approve of it myself. If you have not tried this fragrance, let me know down below. What are your thoughts on the video? Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video and also consider subscribing for more fragrance related content and I'll see you guys next time.